Hi, welcome back to Taronga TV. I'm with Michael McFadden, Unit Supervisor for Reptiles and Amphibians, and we are at the Corroboree Frog Exhibit. Now, you normally see the amazing work that's going on through this window at Taronga here, but Mike, you're gonna take us behind the scenes. Yeah. This is the fantastic thing about Taronga TV. Come with us, come on. So now we're inside, you would not believe what is in front of us here. Mike, you do this every morning. It's quite an incredible thing to come in and be with this beautiful, beautiful species, Australian species of frog. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, sure. In this container at the moment, we have close to 400 southern crabby frogs, which is quite amazing. These guys in the wild, uh, there's less than 50 mature adults remaining. So in here is an insurance population where we're breeding them up for reintroduction to keep the numbers going in the wild. So we've got 400 in here, there's only 50 approximately left in the wild. Can you tell us why that is? Yeah, the, these guys declined back in the, from the mid 80s onwards due to an introduced disease called chytrid fungus. And that disease spread throughout Australia. And these guys, unfortunately, are quite susceptible to the fungus. Uh, and it's really wiped them out. They've, the last kind of two decades now, they've been kind of just slowly declining uh, towards extinction, which is why this insurance colony uh, that you see in here uh, was set up to try to prevent that. Uh, it's an insurance colony, so it's insurance against extinction. And in here, we're yeah, keeping them, rearing them, breeding them, and then each year we're reintroducing eggs or sometimes frogs uh, back into the wild. So you take them back down to the area. Now, a lot of people, you might not realize where these frogs come from. They're quite a unique species, aren't they, in the habitat that they live in. Can you tell us a little bit about that? They are. These guys aren't where you expect to find frogs. They're up in Kosciuszko National Park, and they're only in Kosciuszko National Park. So unlike a lot of other threatened species, um, these guys have really no predators or very little in the way of predation and their habitat's fully within National Park so you'd think they'd be fully protected and the odd thing about it being in Kosciuszko National Park uh, give it another couple of weeks now and all the wild frogs in the back in Cozzy will be covered in snow uh, these guys bunker down they're above that area where it gets covered in snow they bunker down under logs and rocks and vegetation and the snow acts as an insulator and they sit at between zero and two degrees Celsius throughout the winter months. My goodness. Unusual for a frog. It really is. Now tell us the life cycle. It's a typical sort of tadpole into an adult frog. They live, they're aquatic and then they become terrestrial. They live on the land. Tell us a little bit about how long they live and that sort of thing. Sure, yeah, yeah. Well, these guys, uh, when the eggs are laid, they're laid in the summer months and then they spend the whole winter as a tadpole and they metamorphose come the kind of spring to summer, November, December period. And then from there, they take maybe three to four years to mature uh, and become sexually mature in the wild so that they can breed and, and, um, and produce offspring. And then in the wild, they live for about up to nine years, uh, previous studies have shown. Uh, but here at the zoo, we have individuals now that are 17 years of age. Uh, we have Goodness, quite, really? quite a number that really? are 15 to 17 years of age. So, so twice the, the, the age that they'd be in the wild. They do, yeah. And this season, a lot of those were breeding too, breeding quite readily. So they're still, they're not showing any signs of slowing up just yet. That's amazing. Mike, this is the great thing about coming behind the scenes with someone like Michael or any of the keepers here at Taronga or Western Plains. We get to get see behind the scenes, things that you don't normally see. Mike, is there any chance we could have a look at one? Sure, we certainly can. These are so beautiful. They're the most exquisite creature. Have a look at that little guy. So is that a female? That is a female, yeah. You can tell by her body shape. She's a little bit wider around the hips than a male is. Females grow, grow a little bit bigger than males. Males, are, um, they don't tend to uh, get as large around the abdomen. The females do, because they put a lot of resources into reproduction and producing the large eggs that they have. Absolutely exquisite. What a beautiful animal. And that animal weighs about... She would weigh about three grams. So that, folks, is about, if you want to compare that, that's about three M&Ms. Three M&M sweets is the same weight as that female, and males are a little a smaller again. They are, yeah. Males are only about one and a half grams. Incredible. So they are so beautiful. Again. So beautiful. Look at that. You'll notice as she moves around too. She's a walking frog. These guys can't jump. Their little their little back legs aren't like the big legs you see on frogs you might find in the pond or around the back garden. Yeah, look their at little that. legs made for walking. Uh, so these guys aren't a jumping frog. They're very much a crawling frog. And we do have a lot of those in Australia. It's just that. They're ones that people don't typically see. They, they're found in leaf litter, they're found in more remote areas. Uh, so people don't really notice those ones. It's more the, the large pond dwelling species or tree frogs that people see around their back gardens. Now Mike, some people watching would probably wonder why you're wearing gloves, surgical gloves. Yeah. Uh, the reasons for that is, is quarantine. 
So for us, for these guys, they're in a quarantine facility. Uh, we do service these guys first thing in the morning before we service anything else, because we don't want to risk introducing any kind of disease or parasite into our collection here. Um, and for handling the frogs, for handling between any different enclosures in here, I'll change gloves. So that way, if we ever do get a disease for any reason, God forbid it ever happen, um, it won't spread throughout the facility. So right. it's very, very much disease management. Um, and also, it, it does, there are other reasons too. It helps protect the frog's skin. Frogs uh, breathe through their skin, so it's, it's like a respiratory surface in that, in that uh, respect. So by having um, gloves, if I have any chemicals on my skin, and particularly at the moment, the rate that we're using hand sanitizer. Yeah, uh, true, true. In this day and age, it's, it's good to be able to um, make sure we don't harm the frog at all. Yeah. All. We've also got these, these booties on. Um, when we come in here, Mike's got his uh, gum boots on. Uh, but wow, wow, wow. How incredible is that animal? So beautiful. Now, Mike, the question that I want to ask you, and I think I know the answer to it, but I think it's really important to know what Taronga does as one of our legacy species, is this animal could potentially be extinct if it wasn't for, and I'm sorry, I am blowing the trumpet because this is incredible work that we do in the Taronga Conservation Society. Both our zoos do things like this. This animal would potentially not be on the planet. Yeah, yeah very much so. Like the last eggs we had recorded, we've had wild individuals still calling to recent years, but very few. Um, we haven't had any wild eggs laid at non-reintroduction sites since, I think, 2012. So w without the insurance populations uh, and without the excellent work of our partners in, in DPI, uh, Threatened Species Officer out there, Dave Hunter, who works so hard on these animals and uh, us setting up insurance colonies, the species could very well be gone. Uh, if not, it, it certainly would be very soon if it wasn't. It was the odd frog hanging on about the insurance population and reintroduction program. And your reintroduction program, it's one of those programs that's gonna, it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take like a, a number of years, if not decades, to be able to reintroduce and rebuild populations. But I'm pretty optimistic that we'll be seeing these guys back in numbers of many, many thousands back in the wild again. Uh, it's just given time. That's fantastic. So that's the sort of stuff we do at Taronga, at both our zoos, and you don't get a chance to see, but hopefully with Taronga TV, we're sharing these stories, we're sharing these messages, and there's lots more to come. You never know what's around the next corner. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Aiden.